What's going on guys? Uh, welcome to Python data analysis. So we're going to be using pandas for data analysis in Python. So the first few videos, I want to go over the basics of pandas and then we will try to tackle some sort of data analysis problem. I might also throw in some matplotlib, create a different series for that. So you learn the basics of that as well. And then we will try to tackle potential data analysis problems. All right, so with that said, let's just get started. So in this video, we will go over some of the pandas basics. And the pandas basics means the two primary data structures of pandas. So pandas will take data and convert it into its primary data structure because the primary data structures allows for easy manipulation and analysis of data. So it converts the data into either a series or data frames. Take a look at these data frames. Well, I'll run the first cell, which is just going to import pandas as pd and numpy as mp. So if you guys haven't installed pandas and numpy, I suggest you do so. It's just pip install pandas and pip install numpy. If you guys run into any problems, just let me know in the comments. All right. So the two primary data structures we'll be dealing with are series and data frames. There's also something called panels, which is uh, three-dimensional, but for the uh, most part, series and data frames are the two essential primary data structures of pandas. Now pandas is built on top of NumPy, so you could quickly turn these arrays into pandas data structures. So most of the series, the values are actually based off NumPy. And as we go along further in the video, you'll get a much clearer understanding of all this. So first we'll start off with series. Now this first line here, values, is just creating some dummy data. So this lint space is basically just creating dummy data. The zero to 20 is the range and the 15 stands for intervals. So we have 15 equally spaced intervals going from zero to 20. And we'll just run this. All right. Now we'll have values, which is an MP array created by mp.lintspace. So as you can see, we have 20 different elements. We have values, which is just a, a NumPy array uh, with the shape of 15. So basically we have 15 rows and 15 elements in this case. So this is our values, MPy, a NumPy array. So now with this NumPy array, what we're going to do is create a pandas series. And it's very simple to do so. We will import pandas once again. And now, create a series. All you do is pd.series. And within this uh, series constructor, you feed in the values, and that's it. This name is just optional. So if you want to name your series, you can do so, but the name is optional. So pd.series, and just feed it a numpy array or a list. But in this case, we'll use a numpy array because that's what we have. So I run this. And that's it. Now we have a series. And if we look at the format of the series, you'll see it consists of two columns, an indices column or index column and the values column. So that's what pandas a series does. It'll take a set of values and it'll convert it into indices and columns. Now these indices allow you to easily locate certain values. So if you want, say, the seventh row, you can easily do so. And that's why we have indices. It's for easily handling of data, locating data, and manipulation data analysis. So basically, these indices make it easy to do some of that stuff. We have a series. Um, if we take a look, the name is test series, and the data type is float64. If we do type s, you'll see it's a pandas.core.series.series. And the components of a series. So we just went over this a few seconds ago, but basically the components are the indices and the values. Index are the values. And we can access these by using the dot method or the dot attribute. And here we have the series dot index to get the indices, which is a range index going from zero to 15, stepping by one, and the values, which is just the numpy array that we fed in. So that's basically a series. Now we're going to get into the bread and butter of pandas, which is the data frame. So you could think of the series as one dimensional and the data frame as two dimensional. 
So basically the data frame is going to be consisting of multiple series. And there's multiple ways to create a data frame, but in this video, I will keep it simple and use a dictionary. So if you look at Temptic, basically what it's doing is it's creating keys from zero to three, and the values are represented by the series that we just created. And if I run this, we now have a Temptic consisting of keys and values. So the keys are zero, one, two, and the values are the series. So basically I'm just making multiple copies of the series that I just created a few seconds ago. So this is the first one, second one, and third one. So now that we have a deck with keys and values, it is very easy to create a data frame. So we use pd.dataframe and we throw in the temp tick. Now one thing you should be careful of with the data frame is the data and frame. So you should just pay attention to the capitalization of D and F. A lot of times I make the mistake of trying to do uh, data and make the frame lowercase, but it's actually data frame, capital D and a capital F. So please pay attention to that. All right, so we save the DF or the data frame to DF, which is just a, a common notation uh, widely used within the pandas community. And now we'll take a look at the data frame. So once again, we have the indices, and now instead of just one column, we have three different columns. And since we have multiple columns, we need to label them accordingly. So in this case, the labels are the keys. So our keys were 0, 1, 2, and those are the labels to the columns, or the names of the columns. Now having a data frame in this structure really helps with data analysis, and we'll see that in the subsequent videos. All right. So once again, we have the indices, the column names, and the values. So those are the three components of a data frame. And just like I said, indices, columns, and values. So df.index returns 0 to 15. df.columns will represent or return 0, 1, 2, which is just these three column names. And then we have df.values, which is going to return all of the values. And as you can see, it's in the multi-dimensional NumPy array. So if you don't know much about uh, NumPy arrays, I wouldn't worry too much at this point. If you guys need me to create some simple videos on that as well. So now that we've uh, gotten a basic understanding of the two primary data structures, let's take a look at how we can make some changes to some of the primary parts of the data structures. So we'll start off with an index. I will start off with the data frame because it's the more complicated version of the data structures. Now we're going to get the len of df.index 15 because what we want to do is we actually want to change the index names. So here the default indices are zero to 14, but we want to give it some special custom labels. And I'll do that using this list comprehension. So basically just going through 1 through 15, and instead of just having 1 through 15, I'm going to add some string as well and create a list of new indices. So I've created new indices, and now let's just run this. And you'll see that this is a list consisting of 15 different elements, the same as our len, df.index. But instead of just being 0 to 15, we've added some text as well. So this is going to be our new indices. So we have a list of all of the custom labels to our new indices, and we just feed it into the df.index attribute. So df.index equals new indices, and df.head, what df.head does is just, instead of displaying the entire data frame, we're just going to display the first five rows of it. And if you just look at the first five rows, you'll see that the indices are now labeled according to our custom labels from zero to four. Now we can do the same with columns, df.columns. So we have df.columns, which is uh, 0, 1, 2. This is based on the keys of the dictionary. Now we run this and df.head. And now we have custom column names. So df.columns equals, once again, I use the same uh, list comprehension as I did above to create custom column names and df.head to display it. 
So this was a quick introduction to the primary data structures. And in the next video, I will show you the multiple ways we can get our data into these primary data structures. So we want to get our data into a series or into a data frame. And then in the subsequent videos, we'll see what we can do with these primary data structures. All right, so that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next video.